Hello everyone, welcome to our Wednesday evening devotional once again. This is Mike McDaniel, the evangelist of the Central Church of Christ in Carothersville, Missouri. We hope that you are having a great day today. I want to give the second part of a lesson that I gave some time ago on the Christian and civil government. We need to finish that up. And I want to begin in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. This passage contains one of the longest and clearest statements in all of God's Word regarding the attitude and the conduct of Christians toward the government under which they live. It teaches us that civil authority requires our obedience when such obedience does not require us to disobey God. Respect for civil authority is required. An Old Testament illustration of this is Daniel. In Daniel chapter 1, Daniel would not do what the Word of God forbade, eating certain kinds of food. In Daniel 6, he refused to stop what God had commanded him to do, pray. Daniel and his friends obeyed God, yet they never wavered from, wavered from honoring the king or being respectful to him. In Titus 3, 1, Paul says, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man. We should be very careful as to how we speak of those in positions of authority. We may not agree with them, but we must pay them the respect their office is due. Jude verse 8, Likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Have you ever been guilty of speaking evil of dignitaries? Michael the archangel did not even speak abusively to the devil, but simply said, The Lord rebuke thee. We need to respect positions of authority, obey their commands when it does not conflict with God's will, and pray for them. It is said that during the Civil War, when the Northern Army entered Nashville, Tennessee, that officers were sent to question Brother David Lipscomb. The officers asked whether or not Brother Lipscomb would respect the authority of the government of the Northern Army. Brother Lipscomb replied that he would be in subjection to that authority so long as it was in power. He realized that civil authority demands our subjection. Civil authority is to be a minister of God to do good. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Romans 13 and 3. This is true as a rule. There have been some exceptions on record where rulers were a terror to good works. Rome herself was such within a few generations after Paul wrote this. That government caused the death of literally thousands of Christians simply upon the grounds that they were Christians. Countless numbers gave their lives in the arenas with starving lions to the delight of heathen spectators. It is said that frequently 
the Roman skies were lighted by the burning bodies of Christians. Well, in that instance, the government was a terror to good works. We must keep in mind that Paul was discussing the mission of civil government, not the abuses of civil government. God desires that civil authority be his minister to promote good. But sometimes governments are not as God would have them to be. Government is to promote good. Paul speaks of the good citizens of such a government receiving praise. He said, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Romans 13, 3. Civil authority has been ordained to bring praise to those who do good. Praise involves honor and approval. Paul wished Christians would make for themselves such a reputation that they would be praised by the powers that be rather than being prosecuted by those same powers. If you enjoy a quiet and peaceable life, a life of godliness, and if you demonstrate the love of God and uh, rather than making trouble, then you ought to find yourself receiving praise from civil authority. Next, Paul speaks of the government as being the servant of God. When government functions as God ordains, that government becomes the servant, the diakonos, the minister of God, by doing good unto you. The President of the United States, the Senators, the Representatives, the Chief Justices, all the way down to the officials in state and local governments are all to be the servants of God in this special capacity. They carry out a God-ordained service. God uses them for the good of all who do good. They are God's minister, fulfilling a purpose of God. They are every bit as much ordained of God to do their work as any preacher of the gospel is to do his work. In his commentary on Romans on page 452, Brother Burton Kaufman tells of inviting two New York policemen into his living room. He gave them a cup of coffee and read Romans 13 to them and gave them an exposition of it. He said their astonishment and gratitude was nearly incredible. And one of them reads for the New Testament to read it for himself and said, I do wish that everyone knew this. And the other spoke up and said, well, it would help a lot if all the quote unquote clergymen in our city knew it. Paul points out that civil authority is ordained of God it demands our subjection. It is to be God's minister to do good. And then for civil authority is a minister of God bearing the sword to punish those who do evil. By the way, the word clergy in the Bible is not used for preachers. It's used for the congregation by Peter, but uh, that policeman was using it as it's commonly used. Now in Romans chapter 13 and verse 4, For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. If you do what is evil, be afraid, because God has given government the right to bear the sword. And it doesn't bear the sword for nothing. You don't spank or find people with a sword. You kill people with a sword. So Paul is saying that government is given the right to inflict final punishment, the punishment of death. God has ordained civil government to bear the sword for the purpose of putting evildoers to death. If you've ever wondered if capital punishment is authorized, you have your answer in this verse. The sword is a symbol of death. In Genesis 9 and 6, when God was laying down some basic matters regarding human government, he said, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. 
Matthew 26, 52, Peter took out his sword and started to attack the soldiers who were coming to arrest Jesus. Then the Lord said, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. He was telling Peter that if he took a life, he would die, because that was the law. The Lord upheld capital punishment. In Acts 25, 11, Paul said this to Festus the governor. He said, For if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. Well, why did Paul say that? Because he knew that is God's standard. He affirmed the right of government to take his own life if he had violated the law and was worthy of death. Government is to serve God as an avenger of those who have been wronged. If a government is serving as the minister of God, it will be a terror to evil men. If it is doing its job, it will strike fear into the hearts of evildoers. Often our justice system shows pity for criminals under, undeserving of it, partiality towards some people and not others, and punishment that comes only after incredible delays. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, Solomon said, therefore the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. The coddling of criminals, as well as the condemnation of the just, is condemned in the word of God. May God help us as Christians to have the relationship with civil authority that will be pleasing in his sight. Thanks so much for being with us today for this Wednesday evening devotional. Till next time, have a good day.